if the world's gradual implosion over the last couple of years has spurred you to just think, sod it, I'm going to live for the moment. You might be looking for something entertaining to spend your hard-earned cash on. It'll only go on useless stuff like food, housing, or relaxing holidays otherwise, so why not spend your time speculating on what a reasonably affordable purchase might lead to in the future? A £10,000 budget cap actually inspires some pretty intriguing options. And before we begin, if you're watching this film and you think, I like that, thanks guys, then just give us a like and subscribe to the channel and then click that lovely bell icon to make sure you see absolutely everything from Goodwood Road and Racing. A £10,000 budget cap. Well, you knew there was going to be a Renault Sport product here somewhere, so why not just get it out of the way first? Only 500 Renault Clio 182 trophies were ever sold in the UK, and it has a completely rock-solid reputation as the absolute benchmark of hot hatches of its time. So the trophy is already a rare collector's car. However, the 172 Cup can be had for about half the price, and we would argue is probably the better car anyway. Okay. So it loses the sack stampers and Recaro seats, but the cup is 80 kilograms lighter than its more expensive sister. That is partly due to the fact that it has no ABS and is therefore even more hardcore to drive, but in Mondial Blue on silver speed lines, it's beautifully understated. There are, of course, a lot out there, and many of them have been ragged to within an inch of their collective lives, but those that haven't exist and will quickly attract those priced out of the 182. This is one of those get-it-while-you-still-can moments. We've already tried to tempt you with a spider in our film on a budget 10 times today's, but here's an open-topped mid-engine Porsche for those without a sky-high budget. The 986 Boxster's styling fell out of favour about five minutes after it was launched, but as time has gone on, those fried egg headlights and vivid indicators have become more and more appealing. The early 2.5 litre cars were modest, with 204 horsepower, so if you want meaningful performance, you will need to hunt for a later 260 horsepower 3.2 litre Boxster S. But Porsches are going to do what Porsches are going to do, so options on 986 Boxsters are already getting thinner. So don't discount that 2.5 straight off the bat. Think about performance quality, not just quantity. The warning is that Boxsters can be cheap to buy but expensive to own, so make sure you find the car with the right history to avoid a Porsche premium. And remember, if there's one thing we've learnt, it's that the earlier, purer versions of any car are often the ones that end up being the most sought after. While some will be looking for instant money from an investment classic, there's just as much satisfaction to be found from buying something underappreciated. A car you can love long before the rest of the world wakes up to its secretive charms. The BMW Z4 3.0-litre SI Coupe must be one of those cars. The attraction is perhaps helped by how much its thunder is generally stolen by the Z4M with the engine from an M3. But while the 3.0-litre SI may not be as shouty as its M brother, we know that with its straight-six engine, rather attractively aged lines and manual gearbox, the SI is the one to go for in secret. Prices are on the rise, but you can say that for every classic car, and the Z4 SI is still available for under £10,000. With looks this good, we think that age has been extremely kind to the original Z4, a fundamentally sorted foundation of great engine and rear-wheel drive chassis, it's surely only a matter of time before they start to disappear out of view. So important to the very idea of Audi's modern image is the TT that it's often hard to remember just how big its arrival was. Back in 1998, the first generation TT looked fresh, new and completely different to Audi's rather straight, staid image. Thankfully, today that sleek image still looks almost as fresh as it did back then. There are plenty around, and some of them are exceedingly cheap, but cheap is often for a reason, so do not be afraid to be picky. But the TT is still a bit of a bargain, and a £10,000 budget may even get you a limited edition Quattro Sport with extra power and Recaro seats. 
Or you could look at the 3.2 V6 which launched DSG transmission onto the world. But even so, we still think that a manual 225 horsepower Quattro Coupe is the best place for our cash. Look for the one with the lowest miles but the biggest history possible. The bonus is that you'll be able to live with one of the best looking interiors of all time in what remains still arguably peak TT. Some people will try to tell you that the hideously slow, robotized manual gearbox kills all the fun promised by the smart roadster. But they are wrong. With a little bit of proper application, it is nowhere near the deal breaker that many want it to be. Just simply lift between the shifts as if you were pressing the clutch pedal yourself and suddenly it's a very viable prospect. And then you can enjoy those appealingly dinky looks in serenity. The Smart Roadster promises go-kart feel, and with a little left foot braking, that promise is properly realised. 81 horsepower might not sound a lot, but it's in a car that weighs less than 800 kilograms, and that power is delivered in a hilariously boosty manner, so it totally over-delivers on fun. If that's not enough, then there's a 101 horsepower Brabus version that's slightly bonkers too. Even 20 years after launch, it still looks a bit futuristic, and its tiny footprint and small power is arguably more on message than ever today. Hopefully, that will only increase the chances of more surviving. Just to change pace a little bit, not every bit of automotive delight has to be sporty. Instead, for a moment, let's sink back into the cosseting comfort of the absolute high point of the modern Mercedes back catalogue. The contemporary BMW 5 Series may well have caught the imagination of those more keen on driving thrills, but there is a lot more to the W124 than the grey, slip-on wearing Werther's original image may suggest. Despite its boxy nature, the W124 was remarkably aerodynamic. It had quirky features like a clever single windscreen wiper and asymmetric mirrors, and the handling was a lot sharper than its wafty image suggests. Many have sadly now disappeared overseas or have fallen into the life of a million mile taxi, so as the numbers dwindle, prices vary massively, so do be careful. But finding a saloon, or even better, an estate to cruise around in or restore should you wish to, is definitely not impossible. With a loyal following and a shrinking supply, there will be plenty willing to take it off your hands when you've had your fun too. Before we move on, we'd just like to say thanks again for watching this video, and if you have enjoyed it, do click that like button, it really helps us out. Right, let's move on with the rest. The third generation MR2 is often dismissed as impractical and underwhelming compared to more glamorous alternatives like a Lotus Elise or Vauxhall's VX220. And it is true that if you're going, well, anywhere, you'll need to pack light. Extremely light. But while it's not as exotic as the Elise twins, the MR2 does manage to match the lightweight thrills of the Lotus, easily weighing in under that magic tonne. That's partnered with a very rev-happy 1.8 litre engine with 140 horsepower, which in the circumstances is more than enough. Things to look out for include the very well documented disintegration of the MR2's catalytic converters on the early cars, but reliability is normally pretty Toyota-ish. Running costs are also as small as its weight, and as recognition grows for this early 21st century gem, so will it become one of those miss them when they're gone cars. If you want something revolutionary, fuel efficient, and a bit quirky, but you really can't stump up the cash for the Volkswagen XL1 we featured in our first video in the series, then the Honda Insight is probably the perfect alternative. Plenty of column inches have already been lavished here, celebrating the charms of Honda's first serious foray into electrified motoring. They have included, among other things, its slippery styling, shared production line with the NSX, and even its super light touch driving nature. It was a hybrid pioneer, and the original Insight is still one of the most convincing applications of the technology we've seen yet. This one was very much about actually changing the world rather than subverting hybrid abilities in order to avoid a little bit of road tax. 
There aren't many around anymore, but a quick scan reveals some are just under our £10,000 threshold. And with appreciation growing and knowledge of the perils of our planet increasingly on our minds, the insight looks more and more like a bit of a smart buy. Plus, it's actually really cool. Those are cars that we would buy if we had £10,000 burning a hole in our pocket right now. But what have we missed out? Or which one would be your choice? Let us know in the comments below.